Growing up, I always had a passion for fossils. I used to watch documentaries like Walking with Dinosaurs all the time. And to me, the most fascinating fossils of all are the ones that tell a story. Not just about a different time in Earth's history, but an actual individual's life and death. The fact that you can find clues to learn details about a living thing that has been forgotten eons ago, that is just the best part of this field of science to me. And as luck would have it, I got to scratch one fossil I have known about for a long time off my bucket list when I traveled to Crawford, Nebraska and got to see the Trailside Museum of Natural History, home to a pair of titans that have been locked in combat since the Ice Age. More than 10,000 years ago, in the middle of the Great Plains that would eventually become Northwest Nebraska, there was a bounty of wildlife that today can only be compared to the African Serengeti. Massive herds of grazing animals roamed across the landscape, and a multitude of predators were constantly on the hunt. And also, like in the case of modern-day Africa, there was an elephant roaming the grassland. And like their cousins, the Colombian mammoth was every bit an unstoppable force in its environment. At 4 meters tall and 10 tons, an adult probably had very little to fear from most predators, especially before humans arrived. Scientists are pretty sure that they lived very similar lives to modern elephants, where females lived in herds and raised the calves, while the males tend to live alone and only interact with the herds to mate, or for the most part, only interacting with each other to compete for mates. That's the main topic of the centerpiece exhibit at the Trailside Museum. In the summer of 1962, a pair of skeletons were found of adult bull male Colombian mammoths, estimated to both be around 40 years old. These would have been two alpha males in their prime, but they were found together in death because one day over 10,000 years ago, a combination of incredibly bad luck and their own hormonal rage would get the best of them. You see, male modern elephants go into a hormonal state called must when it's time to mate. And it's believed that all proboscideans, or elephants, do this, including mammoths. In this state, male elephants basically go insane. Fueled by 60 times their normal level of testosterone, they become hyper-aggressive. They just go after everything and anything. It doesn't even have to be a reasonable threat to their chances to mate. It's believed that this was the condition affecting these two males, who accidentally became locked together in a fight and unfortunately were never able to separate themselves. This happened because the right tusk just happened to be broken on one of them, and the left tusk was broken on the other. This allowed them to push much closer together than what normally happens in these scuffles, and then the unbroken tusks became locked together on the other side. After days of exposure to the elements, lack of food and water, and the stress of being in this state and attached to another individual in the same testosterone-fueled rage, the two titans fell. And this fossil find had even more to tell us about this event that took place so very long ago. Under closer inspection, it was discovered that there was a third animal that fell victim in this conflict. The complete skull and jaw of a coyote was found underneath the right elbow of one of the mammoths. Now obviously there's no way of knowing 100% how exactly this happened. However, there are a few theories. One is simply that when the mammoths fell, they landed on the remains of a dead coyote. Or, there may have been a pack of coyotes circling the stuck mammoths as they grew weaker, and one of them just got a little too close when the mammoths fell. Or possibly a coyote was feeding on the already dead mammoths, and part of the body collapsed in on it. Either way, somehow these three individuals were fossilized together and discovered eons later. To me, these are without a doubt the most fascinating fossils of all. The ones that actually tell us something about the life of the organism who left these bones behind. Because fossils are so much more than just rocks and bones, they're how our planet writes its own history. Whether it's Sternberg's Zafactina skeleton, these clashing mammoths, or any of the other important discoveries I have yet to cover, these are the fossils that broaden our understanding of the history of life more than anything else. The Trailside Museum is a smaller museum, but they do have quite a bit more than what I talked about today, focusing on life in the Cenozoic era. 
And if you ever find yourself within a day's drive of Crawford, Nebraska, I definitely recommend checking it out. And if you enjoyed this little tour from me, let me know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see more from me, hit subscribe. I think before I make another museum video, I might do something else next. I've got a few other ideas, but that doesn't mean that I, I won't welcome more ideas from all of you. So if there's anything in particular you want to hear me talk about, let me know in the comments. Alright, that's all I've got for today, everybody. Take it easy.